Hello, I'm Jordan Guth, host of season two and three of the Soundstage Audio File podcast, as well as lead reviewer for a new video series on our YouTube channel called Practical Audio File. And trust me, a new review of the PSB Alpha IQ system is coming soon, but it's taken me a lot longer to finish than I thought. But today, I'm here to tell you what's new on the Soundstage Network for September 15th. On Soundstage Australia, Barry Jones dissects the inbuilt technologies and sonic performance of NAD's Masters M66 streaming preamplifier, which Roger Cano also reviewed on Soundstage Hi-Fi earlier this month. Barry was super impressed with the M66's sound quality and even more so after engaging the unit's onboard Dirac processing. Barry states, the M66 is an exceptional component, providing an incredibly powerful set of features at a very affordable price. When partnered with the right amplifier, perhaps an M23 from the NAD Masters range, you'd have to spend a lot more to put together a system that could come close to the level of performance possible here. On Soundstage Global, we just posted the first installment of Aaron Garrick's account of building a new reference listening room in his Vancouver home. As Aaron outlines, there was a ton of work to be done before he can even think about installing components. Gutting the old room, installing dedicated circuits for his home theater system, two-channel system, subwoofers, and video projector, laying down network, HDMI, speaker, and subwoofer cables before the drywall went up. Putting in sound-absorbing insulation, building a stage for his theater seating, and creating custom millwork. Watch for part two coming soon, when Aaron explains his component choices and provides listing impressions and measurements of his new room's acoustic performance. In the meantime, check out the latest installment in Jason Thorpe's My Audiophile Neighborhood series, also coming soon to Soundstage Global. This time around, Jason swaps the subwoofers in his friends Ron's and Rob's house, followed by some last minute tweaking. On Soundstage Ultra, Philip Gold puts a pair of AW300M monoblock power amplifiers from Norway's Electro Company at through their paces. In my test, the AW300M amplifiers played effortlessly at very high volume levels delivering prodigious bass output and rich tonality, especially rich for a solid state design, Philip writes. They had great presence, a black background, and strong resolution. Can you get a decent set of speakers for 70 bucks? After listening to Dayton Audio's classic B65 bookshelf speakers, Tom Moon believes you can. When the B65s were on sale for $69.98 a pair, Tom pulled the trigger and bought his own pair to review. In his review for Soundstage Access, Tom concludes, if you're thinking of setting up a second system in a bedroom, den, or office, or on something for a teenager's room, do not overlook the Dayton Audio's B65s. This dandy little pair of speakers is among the most amazing values of the era. In his monthly unboxing feature, senior editor Dennis Berger offers up some clues of what to expect from his upcoming review of TX VRDS 701T CD Transport. On Soundstage Hi-Fi, George DeSalle reviews Monitor Audio's Gold 360 loudspeaker, a slim three-way floor standard with dual six-inch bass drivers, a three-inch mid-range driver, and an updated micro-pleated diaphragm tweeter. The Monitor Audio Gold 306G is a most capable, highly refined loudspeaker, George writes. It is neutral and transparent, revealing the subtlest recording detail. It is fast and dynamic, and it is honest, adding neither warmth nor color to recordings. When Roger Cano reviewed NAD's Masters M66 streaming preamplifier on September 1st, he concluded, I cannot think of another product at a comparable price that comes close to the M66 in performance and flexibility, let alone one that surpasses it and is more deserving of my recommendation. The M66 won a Reviewer's Choice Award, and now it's been named a recommended reference component. On Soundstage Simplify, Todd Weitzel reviews Blue Sound's new ultra-affordable Node Nano Streamer. With its high-performance DAC, solid software platform with integrated support for many streaming services and multi-room capabilities, the Node Nano is a standout choice for anyone looking to dive into the world of wireless music streaming, Todd concludes. You might not want to come up for air again. On Soundstage Experience, music editor Joseph Taylor explores Katie Kirby's second album, Blue Raspberry. As good as Blue Raspberry is, I think Kirby is in the early stages of a career that will almost certainly grow in talent and accomplishment, Joseph writes, then says, her skills as a melodist are strong and she writes songs that highlight her voice. Her lyrics are intelligent and she delivers them with wit and passion. On Soundstage Solo, senior editor Jeffrey Morrison reviews Bowers & Wilkins' PI-8 True Wireless Earbuds. B&W's PI-7 S2 earbuds were one of Jeffrey's favorite earphones of 2023. 
Are the PI-8 a worthy successor? Read Jeffrey's review to find out. That's everything, but I want to remind you to check out soundstage.com to find all the new article links. Also, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel already, we're at youtube.com slash soundstage network. We have new videos posted every few days. And if you want to hear more from me, check out the Soundstage Audiophile podcast. We have a new episode every two weeks. And of course, on Practical Audiophile, with a look at the PSB Alpha IQ speaker system coming soon. Thanks for watching, and see you on October 1st.